And we are back. Skulk, very, you are very welcome. Um, Thank you. Super glad to have you. Um, it's super cool because this is, I think this, this is the second time that you and I are going are gonna to be sharing a stage at, at a sort of knowledge sharing thing. I think the last... in person for the first time. Yes. Yeah. And that is, that is amazing. I'm super glad for it. Yeah. I think there was that one LinkedIn post where I was like, yeah. <laughs> fate decided that we need to meet in person. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and here we are. How have you found the event so far? How have you, what's, your, what's your take been? Sure. It's, uh, I think, like, I've just once again realized the value of in-person events. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's tough. Like, I think specifically at, at Front End Development South Africa, we're mm -hmm. having a hard time now transitioning back to in-person events after mm -hmm. kind of COVID is kind of, I don't want to jinx, but, you know, kind of fizzling out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you get so used to online events and it's just so convenient. And uh -huh. But then you're at something like this. And I think just once again, you just realize this, there's just something about like physically chatting to some, someone in person. Mm -hmm. and, and and just like kind of having all these conversations that you can just jump into and so forth. Yeah. Um, I think that's phenomenal. No, I think you are right. And in some ways, like it's easy to get used to the almost... Um, synthetic environment of mm. being at home because mm. when you're at home you can control everything like mm. you decide when people can see you or not with your camera mm. you decide when people can hear you or not mm. but then here it's sort of like everybody can hear everyone else all the time and it's mm. like i was thinking about it the other day it's, it's like it's oh you've almost forgotten what it's like to be in a crowd like yeah. the loudness of a crowd yeah, and just yeah, the, yeah. the jostling and yeah, all of that yeah, 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 yeah. um but maybe a little bit more topical is like the experience of sort of designing and or design but even Dev, problem solving in general, mm. when you're speaking to people, there's a layer of engagement that oh, doesn't yeah. exist yeah. when you're operating online. Yeah. So, I, so I think people often ask me, like, why am I involved in so many things? Mm. Um, and it's a big problem for me. I'm just involved in too many things. I'm involved in too many things that, like, take a lot of energy, but mm. don't, I don't get any. Like, I, I often joke and say that, you know, um, my... Uh, my salary for Fed size is probably in a negative. I probably <laughs> lose X amount of money each month, like both Justin and I. Yeah. So I often joke and say the volunteers actually make more money from Fed size than we do. <laughs> but, um, and I think a lot of people have asked me over, over the years, like, why am I just so involved in so many things? And I mm -hmm. think for me, and I, I think that what you kind of pointed out here is key, is that I don't have a formal background in tech. Mm. So when I started getting into the tech space, mm. um, the way in which I kind of navigated the space, figured things out, and I think this is also a time before things like Udemy and so forth, mm -hmm. is actually just attend meetups and stuff and be wow. like, you know, listen to people talk about things and like chat to people about like, you know, hey, I'm struggling with this thing, what do I do? Mm. Um, and I think, like, eventually at some point, I actually kind of just got into the actual tech industry. Yeah. And I think I just never stopped going. Yeah. And I'm still just going to meetups and conferences <laughs> and things today, so. Mm. Um, but it's just like, to me, that's kind of just the space that, like, I associate with the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something really amazing about that because I think it's easy to sort of see, look at a conference as just, I have to sit there and listen for a couple of hours. Mm. But if, if you can actually learn things from people, yeah. it's yeah. such a great source of knowledge. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're in the work environment, you typically are working with the same people yeah. who generally know the same stuff. Maybe yeah. they're learning a couple of new things here and there, but yeah. it's generally the same thing every day. Yeah. But then you come to something like this and you, you, know, you meet people who use different design methodologies, mm. companies that are in different industries, and you sort mm. of get this sort of boiling pot of, yeah. of, of different kinds of knowledge. Yeah. And that's why I think these things are really important. Yeah. Really, and, really important. And I, I think the other thing as well is when you are kind of curating your own content. So when mm -hmm. I'm sitting at home, you know, I have the people that I follow, I, like the type of books that I read and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a space like this, and I think this is also one of the benefits of in person, is mm -hmm. that, you know, you're sitting there and you have to listen to this talk now. Yeah. You know, if it's online, it's like, Cool, yeah, I'll maybe just make some I'll coffee. Go, yeah, and like, like ah, this, this guy's talking about like, so, so the talk that's happening right now is about mm. like kind of uh, UX in dental care, mm. which is something that I haven't even considered. I wouldn't even actively seek out any yeah. information about that. Um, and I might not even realize how interesting it is. And mm -hmm. then when I'm sitting in a talk like that and like, you know, I'm in that space and I'm listening and I'd be like, 
this is actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, the, there's all these things I've never considered. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's sort of like if you come to the, a, a conference like this with a learning mindset, you're yeah. open to things that you would usually brush off. Yeah, exactly. Like things that you'd usually just be like, oh, that's boring. That's not related to me. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah. Here you're a little bit more open to, yeah. to, to new things. And I think another thing for me is as well is uh, what I find really useful is, is the time afterwards where you speak to people mm. and you're like, I have this, like, what about this thing? Like, so that, that person mentioned, mentioned this thing. Here's mm. my take on it. What do you think? Mm. And, and like, I find like that to be really insightful as well. Even yeah. if it's just a sanity check, even if it's just mm-hmm. like, listen, did I understand that talk correctly? Mm. Um, yeah, it's, and I, I think specifically, so I'm in the world of development as well, yeah. but I think specifically in the world of UX, because it's still such a young field. And, mm. and when I say young field, obviously you can trace UX back like very to far, other, yeah. but mm. like, like kind of what we understand as UX today mm. is still a very young field. And we're very much still figuring out what does a, someone who works in UX even do? Mm. And I think that is something that's being figured out within conversations. Yeah. Um, and not something that you can maybe just go and read on Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know, for me, maybe I just find it more complex than other people. But for me, like, it's only something that I make sense of and kind of I'm able to position myself in mm. when seeing what other people are doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you are right. And it, 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 because it also forces your mind in some sense to consider things from a different angle. Mm. But um, one of the things that I do also want to chat a little bit about um, is the fact that you're here today as a speaker, not just as a person listening. Because yeah. um, I think up until now, people might think that you're just a part of the audience. <laughs> um, and you spoke about a very, very interesting topic. Now, because I'm sort of doing these interviews, I didn't catch yeah. the whole thing. But if I'm not mistaken, you're speaking about the similar topic as um, the event we spoke at together. Yes, the exactly the same system. one. So mm-hmm. um, that was the first time I actually spoke about it. Wow. Um, and actually, I tend to follow a very lean approach where I just start with the assumption that the first time I do a talk, like I'm just going to completely miss the mark. It's going to be imperfect. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then you kind of refine it. and So, mm-hmm. so I've obviously refined it a lot since. Mm-hmm. But I think I've also, there's a lot of people from, from that were at that event that mm. spoke to me now and like actually kind of gave me like, so I got feedback on that, but also now like in person and mm. like, which is why I, so if you look at my talk as well, you know, mm. I, I oftentimes I feel a bit weird being at a design conference and having mm. my talks, my, my slides be so messy. Because you, <laughs> so a lot of times you get people, especially from the corporate space, mm. where everything is like the corporate logo yeah. and there's like a nice a gradient. Template, mine, is, mine is mm. literally just like, six pixels text here a 12 like it's just like it's like a scratch board but uh, i think there's something really cool there and i often joke that the fact that i still finish my talk and i still work on my talk like maybe up to an hour before i do it mm-hmm. is kind of a feature not a bug you know? uh, and that's because like i think there's so much that you just can gauge Mm. From chatting to people about it, getting a sense of the space and whatever, and actually refining, because I think mm. to me, the specific topic that I spoke on, and, and I guess I can expand on that in a mm-hmm. second, uh, what exactly that is, is also, it's kind of this, this trick where I'm actually helping other people get me to help me answer that question <laughs> by pretending like I have the answer. Exactly. Because um, it's, it's something that I find interesting, and like mm. it's... Um, just because of the scope of the like kind of the, the subject itself, it's just so useful kind of unpacking that in a space, mm. like like transparently and being like, listen, yeah. this is my thoughts. What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. And um, but there's also a sense of vulnerability there mm-hmm. where you always have this fear that people are gonna be like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, or True. or like, you True. know, like He's making me mad because he's saying things that I find like, you know, he <laughs> hasn't, he hasn't, yeah, he hasn't really thought it through yet. And mm-hmm. you know, I guess that's part of the risk. But yeah. I think there's for me something really engaging, even as a speaker, mm. being in the space and yeah. kind of having the space kind of feed into actually my talk mm-hmm. up until the point I actually give it. Yeah, you know? I think that's, you're, you're totally right. And we'll d- dive into the subject matter just now. But I think specifically, it's, it's almost like, you, when you're speaking, it's kind of like you're thinking through it with the room. Yeah. 
And so you, you sort of, there, there are some things, like some maybe things that could be better or areas that you could improve yeah. that you only realize when you're giving the talk. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's one of the reasons also why if you tend to do it over yeah. and over, it gets better and better and better until you wouldn't even recognize the first and the last yeah. one. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and, and I think what you, the, 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 the workshop that, workshop that you did yesterday with the double diamond mm. you know it's very mm-hmm. much that type of thing as well like you, exactly. you you show up and you're like okay here's some ideas mm-hmm. like let's just let's just work through them let me just see how people react mm-hmm. let me chat to people afterwards and they're like i think you're completely off the mark here or i'm like yeah this really resonated with me let me tell you a story about kind of something similar that you mentioned in your talk and mm. i think then you kind of start that process of refinement yeah yeah um and, but I think like that takes a lot of vulnerability. True. Because um, you True. need to kind of put ideas out there that in retrospect you might be ashamed of. Yes. You might be like, I can't believe I said that, <laughs> which has happened a ton. Yeah, I did to the, the best of us. Yeah, so, so, so my, my DevConf talk that I did beginning of this year, I, mm-hmm. I did the exact same talk uh, at the Century City um, uh, Conference Center uh, mm. maybe like a month ago at some like Global Games conference thing mm. and like I, that talk is just so unrecognizable from the first time I gave it wow. and like and honestly like I think the best talks are the ones I never do again because mm-hmm. I don't realize just how bad they are because <laughs> um, I just do them once and then I but like the ones that I refine like when I think back about like actually kind of some tangents or things that I went on or mm-hmm. ideas that I had I'm like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> but it comes with yeah. the territory. But the yeah. thing is, I think what's important is that you change through the process. Yeah. 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 So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about what you're sharing with our audience um, today. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So I think just in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. So I, and I start this disclaimer because um, I think initially when I started giving the talk, and this is like where I'm getting at, where I'm like, whoa, I can't believe I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, when I started giving it, a lot of people walked away from the talk Wow. With the impression that I say design systems are bad mm. and, you, and you shouldn't do a design system. Mm-hmm. And I think I want to just from the get-go make it clear that that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so my talk is actually titled, um, I can't like, I've changed the title so many times. I think the most recent one is like design system dumpster fires or something. <laughs> but effectively it's exploring like design systems that failed. Mm. Okay. Um, and because a lot of my thoughts are, a lot of my initial thinking from this came from the design system survey that uh, uh, Smartbox does, or Sparkbox, I can't remember their name. They did a lot of the design work for Code Pen and so forth, wow. do every year. And I think maybe two years ago, they asked, like, um, would you consider your design, your organization's design system successful? And I think only 40% of like respondees said they would consider it successful or very successful. And Wow. And it's gotten a bit better nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the most recent one they did is um, uh, about like only 30% said that, you know, mm. um, they, I think they rephrased the question as well. I think they asked, they said now, um, do does it address a need that you have? And I think mm. two thirds said it does. So it's getting okay. better. And I think that's just part of the process of us actually figuring out what design systems even are. Mm. But I think like a third is a big number still. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the most optimistic data out there. Mm. So that means if we have three people, <laughs> one of them, if three people do a design system, one of them would feel that it wasn't a success. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's a big thing. That's, design systems that's are a problem. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I wanted to do is it's, it's good that two out of three design systems are successes. Yeah. And one out of three isn't that bad. But what I find... Concerning is that there's no discussion on that. Yes. I couldn't find anything online of go, talking about like design systems that didn't work out. There's a ton of case studies about like, you know, great success and why yeah. you need a design system. No one talks about, there's also very little discussion mm. on the fact that there are so many design systems that are seen as not successful. Yeah. So I think what, what I and like, um, also, just shout out to someone that helped me on this, Chris LaRue. Um, mm. What we started doing is we started interviewing people anonymously. Mm. Um, that kind of, we started asking around people that feel they were part of a process where a design system ended up not being very successful. Mm-hmm. And we started doing a lot of interviewing. And I think just from curiosity, like trying to figure out, like, why is that the case? And like, you know, I, I, 
and this is maybe what I should have said after the part where I said, like, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do a design system. Like, I, I just do design systems. Mm. That's my day job. Like, basically my day job. <laughs> like, day in, day out, I just work. I do consulting yeah. work. I, I consult teams. I help them build design systems and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I love design systems. Yeah. And I want to make that clear. But because I love them, like, I'm scared that, like, there's a lot of common mistakes that I see people make. Mm. And I'm scared that, like, they give design systems a try because everyone told them how amazing and powerful design systems are. And mm-hmm. they are. Mm-hmm. But it, because anything you do at scale, one, like if it just goes slightly awry because of the scale, it mm-hmm. just turns into a mess. Yeah. So, and I think that is a, some, people, some people's experience of design systems. Mm. And then they just discard this entire idea of design yeah. systems. Because they're like, we did it in our organization. It was a mess. Like, I don't want to hear about designs. And a lot mm. of people that we spoke to, that was their sentiment, yeah. actually. Um, so we started looking at, like, what are some of the common stories? What are some common themes, like, that come up when people actually, um, like, are part of a design system that, they can, that, like, everyone isn't happy with at the end or that gets discarded or thrown away? Mm. Um, and I think, so, effectively, there's a bit of nuance there. there mm-hmm. There's no clear, like, quick tagline answer to that like one two three steps to have a successful design system so which is why I did an entire talk on it but if I were to summarize it as follows is that Mm. design systems are expensive okay I don't think you can get away from that like there's Mm -hmm. a cost to it if you are not sure what that cost is if your design system seems like it's free and it's just you're not paying a cost for that design system, that cost is probably hidden from you. Yeah. Like it's somewhere, it's being either pushed down to another part of this organization Mm -hmm. or it's, you're pushing it into the future and it's going to come back at some point. Yeah. And so the really successful design systems that we found is Mm -hmm. where people were to say like, this is the price we're paying for that design system. Mm. A lot of cases that price was like, Either financially, just like actually having more designers because maintaining a design system mm-hmm. like is actually more work instead of less work. Mm-hmm. Or it was actually having the design process be less efficient mm. and actually more frustrating. Okay. So if you look at that in a localized manner, mm. that might seem like a massive loss to you. Mm-hmm. Like we, 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 we kind of, as a design team, we implemented design systems and the design process is actually now much slower we have to spend more time in meetings and mm. just like chatting to developers and whatever. And it's so frustrating mm-hmm. because we do something and it comes back and we need to change it. And like it, we need to make it super generic so it can be used in loads of cases. And, you know, we want to make it like really pop and whatever. But because it needs to be generic and reusable, it, mm. it's actually pretty bland. And, yeah. you know, I think those are trade-offs that you need to consider. Mm-hmm. And if you can't articulate those trade-offs, like then like that cost is hidden somewhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, we've spoken to a lot of people where and I think this is another another aspect of my talk so I think the first time we spoke about this like mm. I think a lot of my thinking around this is based on the goal mm. and you mentioned as well that you've, you've actually read it as yes. well and I think a lot Great of my one. thinking around design systems comes from the goal mm-hmm. um, and so the goal is kind of a book about a factory manager it's kind of a novel um, mm pretty oldish book nowadays yeah, yeah. Um, but it like kind of looks at like kind of a factory and exactly that how if you optimize like individual things mm. without taking the entire system into account yeah a lot of times you're making like things worse somewhere more else damage the than fixing yeah exactly. and the other thing is as well one of the key takeaways from that book is you can't ever fully, you can't 100% optimize the system. Mm -hmm. Like, because at some point, you're just moving inefficiency around. Yeah. So by making something more efficient, you're taking the initial inefficiency that was there and you're moving it to another team. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's marketing. Maybe that's the developers. Maybe that's kind of HR or whatever. So at some point, you're just moving inefficiency around. Mm -hmm. So what might possibly happen is you might move that inefficiency somewhere to something that's much more mission critical. Yes. Um, and, and, and so we need to also like start with the assumption that v- like, like all hours spent and all hours saved are not the same. Mm-hmm. So you might save time on something that's not that critical and actually 
cause more efficiency somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I think what we found is we saw that happen the most way design systems were created for a problem that the design team themselves had mm -hmm. instead of to solve a problem that is somewhere else in the organization. Mm -hmm. And like this isn't to say that if you're creating a design system for a problem that the design team has, it's bad. You know, like obviously this is just like correlation, it's not yeah. causation. But what we did see is that the most successful design systems where where it was you, you were looking at a constraint in your organization and mm. because we're in the world of tech, that is usually developer capacity. Mm. Like True. Being able to like write code and push things out is usually the bottleneck the biggest constraint, yeah. in, 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 in most organizations. Mm -hmm. So if you use your design system to kind of elevate that constraint and see like how can we use the design system to actually make that more efficient, mm -hmm. like so developers can actually move faster. Yeah. Um, then like that was usually a good sign in terms of all the interviews mm -hmm. that we did. Those were the ones that had really great outcomes. Yeah. The ones where they were like, the problem was almost like, the most common one was people had a design system because they felt that their UI was... Um, inconsistent. Inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And to me, like, that is fine in a world where, like, design systems have a zero cost to them. Mm -hmm. But, and that's also not to say that that's not a real problem we're solving. Yeah. But, like, figure out what's the cost for that. And yes. in a lot of cases, where we actually spoke to people, when they actually figured out the, the price they're paying for that design consistency, they mm. were like, this is a really bad return on investment. Because, <laughs> like, now we're talking about, like, thousands and thousands of rands mm -hmm. to make sure that the exact red tint of a button is the same. Yeah. Um, so, and I think once again, this is not to say that's not something you should pursue, but start with what is the cost for that. Yeah. And, and usually what we found is that like efficiency gains in the design process was pushed to the devs. Wow. So now the devs, because the devs a lot of times are working with an existing library or mm -hmm. something, now, like, I, 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 I spoke about a specific interview that we had, and obviously, like, everyone I mentioned is anonymous, mm. where they were actually using Tailwind. So, you know, if you're a developer, mm. you know a bit about Tailwind. So, Tailwind has, like, some basic design rules underpinning it. Yeah. So, what they had to do is, so the design team was, like, we're going to make things more efficient. We are going to kind of um, unify the design. We are going to, like, create consistent buttons, consistent and, and like, all the way up to like really big things, you know, like mm. cards. And so the main pain point actually was modals. It ended up mm -hmm. like modals was kind of the thing that had that design system implode. Because mm -hmm. that's just where the wheels started coming off. Really? Like all the different types of modals. Mm. Um, because like the, designs, the design team did a lot of this unification and whatever to solve their own problems that they are having. In other words, to actually make it faster for them to churn out designs in Figma. So mm. they componentized it in a specific oh. manner or whatever. But the problem is the way they did it meant that the development team had to re-engineer a lot of Tailwind mm -hmm. stuff, reverse engineer it to make it fit kind of these, this, this streamlined process that the, de the design team had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you know like anything about the tech world, as I mentioned, your constraint is usually your devs. Yes. So now you're, you're, you're making the design process a lot more efficient. At the cost of like your of bottleneck, the process. actually, <laughs> like having the developers <laughs> spend more time, actually, kind of like mm. making like, coding it to that specification, mm -hmm. instead of actually starting with the developers and asking like, you guys are the bottleneck. Mm. How can we use the design system to? And honestly, if I had that discussion, I'm pretty sure like a, like the outcome would have been Way let's better. continue with Tailwind. Let's build on top of Tailwind. Mm -hmm. You're already using Tailwind. You have all these defaults that you get for free. We don't need to reinvent how a button looks. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can just extend it and create like bigger design patterns from what Tailwind mm -hmm. gives us. Yeah. Because the reality is as well, you know, like most of us aren't like APSA or Microsoft or mm -hmm. whatever. So like brand consistency is an, and, and even in the, in the, in, in the world, thing. yeah, mm. and like even like Amazon is the, the, the massive counterpoint. Like Amazon is known to actually, like their design is like all over the place. Yes. You know? <laughs>
but still, you it, know, it works. Yeah, the mm. same for like things like Gumtree and mm. Craigslist and all of those things. No, um, yeah, I think you've you've brought up a couple of good points, and I think it's a conversation that really needs to happen because, as a person who is in the design system space, I mean. At, the, at my previous job while I was working at Absa, I was working on the design system for the app. Mm. Now, at my current job, I'm working on the design system for our platforms. And I think one of the things that you mentioned that I also um, started to realize is a lot of the content about design systems, yeah. it's not even that it tells the success stories only. It's also that it only speaks about design systems when they're finished. Yeah. Like, that's what they put out. Yeah. And so, as a person coming into that space, you've yeah. got this idea that, that's what you need to create. Exactly. Rather than actually walking you through the process that they yeah. go yeah. to actually yeah. first figure out yeah. what, how do we need to optimize. Are we optimizing yeah. for design? Exactly. Are we optimizing for development? Yeah. Are we optimizing for testing? Like yeah. what, what are we trying to yeah. um, achieve? Yeah. And then building from there. Yeah. And especially now that I've been in that space for quite a while, I think I'm seeing more and more that yeah. that's actually the thing that's needed. Yeah. And that's a conversation that we need to be having. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I can tell you one of the key signs for me, like in the interviews where like if this came up, I was like, okay, this one again, <laughs> is like when people create a design system so that they mm. can say they have a design system. Yes. And like, <laughs> like someone asked about that like after the talk. So they asked about like when... Like, when is something a design system? Mm. And to me, like, that is such a problematic question. Because mm. that starts with the assumption that we need to know when we've kind of... That means that the design... Having a checkbox design uh, system is the goal in itself. Rather than actually achieving a goal. Like, mm. like I th honestly, I think you should just follow, like, once again, elevate those constraints, mm -hmm. figure out how can you optimize the entire, like, organization. And then maybe at some point you're like, hey, we've actually built a design system <laughs> and we've never realized it. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, that's important. Mm. Um, because I often, like, I, like, when I talk about this, I start, like, uh, equating it to agile. Because mm. I think agile is also one of those words which has a bit of, like, clout. Mm -hmm. um, and I start by asking, like, how many, and this is, like, two, like, this isn't something that I kind of actually started mentioning, like, a very good friend of mine, like, uh, Liesl Bester, she actually asked mm. me this once, and I was like, that's such a great question to ask. Uh, she's actually from IO, who's actually sponsoring you in mm. South Africa as well. And she asked, like, have you ever seen any job posts where someone's like, we are a waterfall organization. <laughs> that's, like, come that's join true. our team. And, that's true. And, and, and I think, like, like everyone's like agile, 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 mm. and like, and then you join the team and you're like, cool, all right, here's a fifty page spec, and this needs to be done in seven months. <laughs> yeah, you like, know, like what? What is agile about yeah. this? And and I think we see the same with design systems, mm -hmm. where a lot of the things that prove, like kind of a lot of the what would be the word like less ambitious kind mm. of like artifacts like style guides and those mm. type of things are kind of seen as the the, the old way mm. and we're a real design team we do a design so those those other lame guys they have a style guide and i think we need to get away from yeah. this attachment to this world design this word design system mm. um, style guides are amazing yeah. and, and, and i think like a lot of teams a style guide is enough mm. but they, they feel need. that because we need that checkbox we need to say we have a design system mm. like now they actually their goal is to create a design system, even if it's at the expense of, for example, the developer efficiency and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where I find it really problematic. Yeah, design systems are amazing, mm -hmm. but they're super expensive. Yeah, that's and, true. And if you don't know where it's go, where you're paying that price, like like that, that's very scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I yeah. think that's that's very cool. And so, I mean. In some ways, what you're, you're doing is like it's almost the canary in the coal mine, pointing out that there is a problem in the industry specifically yeah. focusing around design systems. So yeah. what would you say, you know, um, I don't know if it's something that you involve, include in your talk or yeah. just off the top of your head, what would you say are the most important things that we can actually do yeah. to ameliorate that challenge? Like yeah. how do we make our design systems yeah. a worthwhile endeavor? So, I mean, you've already sort of mentioned a little bit yeah. around um, looking at your constraint. Yeah. But outside of that, I mean, if I'm, a, if I'm just a lone designer that's re yeah. responsible for the design system, it can be like a little bit too big for me to think about thinking about the whole company yeah. and how to actually, you yeah. know, um, um, focus yeah. on the, the organization's constraints. Yeah. So what can I do as like an individual oh, designer? That's to, a phenomenal question. That? And like, like I, 
I think this is one of the this is the value of doing these interviews anonymously. Mm. Is like like I'm I'm gonna respond to that in a second, and I can mm-hmm. only respond to that because we did them anonymously. Mm. I think a lot of the problems are because people feel like things need to be in a certain way. Because yeah. as you mentioned, you read all these articles about like the Polaris, like Shopify mm-hmm. design system. Material and, design. And exactly. And you're like, okay, that's what we should strive for. Yeah. Um, and if you don't do that, like you are not a good UI team or you're mm. like, you're not one of the big dogs. Yeah. Um, but so I also just want to caveat with, I don't think it's an industry problem. Mm. Like I think like we're in a much better space now than we were prior to design systems becoming mainstream. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Fair I, I want to say that I don't think it's a problem, but I do think we need to course correct a bit. Because mm-hmm. like, so I like, you know, like once again, like I love design systems. Like mm-hmm. I, I've actually spoken to um, uh, Brad Frost actually as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, like so we had a FedSA event where, mm. where I did a live interview with him. Mm. Um, so like I've been like on this design systems like train for a while. Um, and I think in the early days, specifically with Atomic Design and also like Smashing Magazine's design system book and so forth, like the main thing was selling design systems because mm. no one was interested in it. Mm. Everyone was still thinking about design as making a page, making a mock-up, yeah, creating a static page of every single page on the website. Mm-hmm. So, like, this notion of design systems came and it said, like, we need to stop thinking about design as a system, yeah. and not as visuals. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think that's really great. And, like, yeah. once again, that's kind of what I do day in, day out. And I think selling that idea was really hard. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of effort was put into, like, hey, here's all the benefits. And, hey, you need to think about doing that. But I think we've kind of reached that point where that idea has kind of adopted a lot of like mainstream acceptance. Like I almost want to say like nowadays, if you're a big corporate and you don't have a design system, like people are like, what type of like, what are you doing with your time? Are you a designer? It's just like, because at that scale, obviously, I think at that scale, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, almost a, it's a a non-question. Yeah. Like my talk is obviously addressed at everyone else. Mm. Because my guess is like, if you're in one of those organizations, no one needs to you're not wondering whether I should have a design system or not. You're like, how, like, how do we survive? How do we get there? Mm. Yeah. So I think I need to also be clear about that. But what I do think is now that that has gained adoption, mm. we need to maybe pull back a bit of that selling. Mm. And we need to be like, okay, cool. Okay. Now that everyone has been convinced, mm. we need to get real and chat about the challenges. Yeah, what does okay. this look like in this real life? Yeah, like this isn't like very mark. Order your <laughs> order your ab crusher tomorrow, and you're going to have six pack in three days. You know, so I think we need to be clear about this, and and that's a dangerous conversation sometimes to yeah. have, um, and which is why once again having these conversations anonymously is is amazing. So important. But so here's my response to that. Mm-hmm. What I found is obviously I've been I've been having a lot of discussions around design systems for a very long time now. Mm-hmm. A lot of the people we've interviewed, I've spoken to them previously about design systems and whatever. Mm. And there's a very specific in, like, person that I'm thinking about now where mm-hmm. at one point I asked them, what are their thoughts about actually just building their design on something like material design or mm. Ant or Tailwind or like Salesforce mm. lightning systems mm. or, or, or whatever. Um, and their idea, like, and their response was um, actually... Uh, no, I'm not a big fan of that because obviously Google has their own problems that they're solving. Um, you know, uh, Salesforce has their own problems and they are different from what our mm-hmm. clients have. Um, they're kind of an agency. And I, like, I left actually that conversation being a bit disappointed and I'm like, sure, okay. Because um, like, I do think that is, a, like, like, I think most teams don't need to reinvent how all those low-level things like buttons and radio buttons yeah, work. work. Like their design system sh- and a lot of the work that I do is like the, the higher level to that. Yes. How are these things composed into mm. bigger things like sign-in screens and, and that's modals. the real value. Yeah. Mm. And like I do see, specifically in the anonymous interviews, that being much more the thing being mentioned. A lot mm. of those people have kind of actually said, you know, like initially I thought I started out thinking that I need to design all these low-level things, buttons, mm. radios, um, titles, um, cards, everything from scratch. And there's, I 
think at now I just I, I see a lot of them saying now we actually start with asking the developers mm. what library are you already using? Yes. Or actually what is your preference? Mm. What's the tech stack like? What library? And then using that as a starting point and extending that. Mm -hmm. Instead of instead of actually taking a white big canvas and being like, how does a button look? Mm -hmm. Putting some squares in and working from there. Yeah. Figure out where what's gonna once again, and this is the constraint thing. Figure out what is going to make the developers' lives as easy as possible, make them as efficient as possible, mm. and build on top of that yeah. as your solution. Um, and you'll actually find that, you know, like a big complaint is that, yeah, but then it looks like all the Google stuff or whatever. Mm. Give it enough time. Like, yeah. and it'll, it'll kind of like, it's a, like, I always tell my students as well, because students are very preoccupied with like, oh, no, but like, I don't want to steal someone's design. And I kind of like... <laughs> Little do they know. We steal I, all the time. That, it's that thing about Jacob's Law. Like, Jacob's Law says that because people spend more time on other products than they spend on your product, like, your product is better off looking like other products than looking like something that's not like the other products. Mm, that's a good yeah, point. That's, uh, that's a good Nielsen. point. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so, I think, like, I, I often tell them, like, Take your design and try and obviously apply it to something different. So you, mm. you're like, for example, okay, I'm going to build a to-do app, but I'm maybe going to take inspiration from, let's say, Salesforce or yeah. whatever. Or let's say Atlassian. Okay? Mm -hmm. I tell them, try and stick as close. And like, it's actually really hard. It is. To not like start Change changing it up. And mm -hmm. you kind of, when you open your eyes again, like it looks nothing like the original thing. Mm. But there's like kind of a base level, like, with things like material design and so forth, where some problems have already been solved. Yes, you can take like, them for granted. For example, like like things you might not even think about around accessibility. Mm. You know, focus states, hover mm. states, disabled states, all those things, you get that for free. Mm -hmm. And your client probably doesn't care that much about how does a disabled <laughs> button look. Yeah. What they care probably more about is like, are there three or two buttons? Hey. Exactly. Are they like, does it ask for your email and your name or does it just ask for your email? Mm. So like, like clients care more about how you compose these things mm -hmm. than like actually the border radius here should be two pixels or whatever. Yeah. Even that's super easy to extend. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my advice. Amazing. My advice would be like, don't start from scratch. Mm. Um, even if... It's a big organization and you've decided to do a design system now for the first time. Rather start, you already have a design system. It mm. sucks and it's not documented, but there's already some underlying logic there. Mm. And that logic might come from a library that the developers are using, or it might just come from convention. Mm. But try and find that first. If you are starting from a white page and you're like, I'm going to create a design system now, that's, I always want to say that's not a good sign. Yeah. Um, but once again, I, I might talk about and, this in a year and... And things have changed. And That's I'd be true. like, that was the stupidest <laughs> thing to ever say. And but, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. it's sort of like that thing of putting your ideas out there yeah. for people to sort of give you feedback. And being vulnerable about, mm -hmm. like, this is what I feel, this is how it looks to me. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'd am I'm, rather be honest than try and be diplomatic and yeah. whatever. Like, this is just how it seems to me. Mm. Uh, and like... Honestly, like if you feel different, please chat to me. Mm. Um, like I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. So I'm just like, this is where I'm at. If you actually have some insight that you can be like, Skog, I think you actually misunderstood something here, or I think you have this wrong. Mm. To me, that's amazing. Yeah. Because the reason I'm doing this is for selfish reasons, and that's because I want to get a better understanding myself mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. how do we address this issue of a third of design systems being seen as failures. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's amazing. And thank you so much. I think cool. um, it's, firstly, it's been great chatting with you, yeah. um, as I sort of suspected that it would be. Yeah. Um, but also thank you for sharing this information with the, with the community, because I think um, the work that you're doing in some sense, you know, if you take even a step back from this yeah. conference and just think about the work that you're doing in the context, context of the industry as a whole yeah. is valuable. Yeah. Um, and so maybe just let, let everyone know if they're a little bit, if they're interested in hearing a little bit more about what you think on this matter or on other matters, where can people 
Where can people find you or hear about what yeah, you're doing? Yeah. Mm. Um, so, okay, first and foremost, so I co founded an organization, a non profit organization called Front End Development South Africa. Mm. Uh, so, with a very good friend of mine, Justin Slack. Mm. Uh, so, he's head of design at NML. They do a lot of like kind of the big like financial fintech stuff. Um, and I think we are kind of trying to figure out how do we make front end development more accessible for people? Okay. How do we kind of um, like those who want to learn more about front-end development or those who kind of want to like get into front-end development, how can we kind of assist them? And, and how mm. can we also just kind of provide more resources for the um, industry? Yeah. Because I think what a lot of people take for granted is it's very different than Europe and, and America. True. Especially when it comes to like mobile devices and things. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're very much interested in kind of providing resources for South African front end developers. Amazing. Um, and I, as I said, I often joke that I think Justin and I, like, we are making a negative amount of money each month, <laughs> but it's just like we're so passionate about it. Yeah. So definitely check out front end development South Africa. Okay. Also very involved in something called ZAP, South African Product Design, so ZAPD, mm -hmm. for which you're going to be doing a talk later this week. Yes. And then. I don't know, like, uh, I, I tend to just pop up some places. So, <laughs> nice. Um, Any blogs, social medias, or handles that people can look out for? Or not so much? Uh, like, yeah, maybe just LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I guess. I'm the most active cool. on. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I don't have that strong of a social media presence. Completely um, understandable. <laughs> just because, like, you know, I have a one year old daughter. So, fair uh, enough. <laughs> by the time I have some free time, yeah, I'm like, next day I, I'm just going to switch all electronic devices off. Mm. I just want to chill now mm. and not like have fights with people on the internet. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Skull, thank you so much for your time. I've really yeah. enjoyed this time chatting with you. Yeah. And well done on your talk. I think the people really enjoyed it. Cool. And also, thank you. Thanks for everything you're doing. Like, I'm. Mm -hmm. Also, a massive fan. I said it in my talk as well. I'm a massive fan of kind of the work you're doing and also what your brother Alex is doing as well. Yes, like, it's yes. your man. Like, I steal so many concepts and ideas from you guys. You don't even know. Like, half the things I say, I stole <laughs> from you guys. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a matter of sharing. I yeah. think we, steal, we all steal from each other. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. All right. So Thank much. you very much. And to everyone listening, yeah. have a good day further. Cool. Awesome, man.